As promised, welcome back, hockey fans, to MC Media's continuing coverage of the 8th Annual Cooks Cup. Coming to you live from the Yarmouth Mariner Center in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. My name's David Doucette, and with me for today's game, Cameron George. How's it going? Good. And today's game, or this feature game right now, to the female division, host Yarmouth Vikings, uh, Yarmouth Vikings versus the Avon View Avalanche. And if you don't know where Avon View is, Avon View is... Uh, Windsor, basically. Looking at two great teams, I haven't gotten a chance to watch either yet. Uh, of course, I do go to the high school, so I know a lot of the girls on the high school team. But the Avon View is always a team that can surprise you, so don't count them out. All right, goaltending uh, uh, goal uh, right now for Avon View is going to be uh, Mackenzie Layton. Let's make some noise. And we'll see whether or not it's uh, Lindsay Miner or Kaylee White for Yarmouth. It's uh, Lindsay like Miner looking by her stance. I think uh, White's over on the bench. That's Haru going wide to the right. Shot just goes wide. Coming back the other way, and it is a stream of ponytails. That's always going to be fun to call a number. Yarmouth comes back the other way, going to the corners. Haru. Haru comes away with it, knocked off the puck. It goes up to the blue line, but kept in. Avonview coming back the other way. Try to chip it forward. They do gain the neutral zone. Yarmouth with the puck. Taken away. Only three teams in the female division. Uh, all of this is uh, the female division is going to actually wrap up today. First game was last night. There was already a game earlier today. This game will be game number three, and the final will be tonight. We'll talk a little bit more of that in our next break. Chipped ahead nicely. Once again, this is Haru. Haru has a breakaway. The shot, top shot, top shelf. Bar down. Close. I think that was more so inner than the net, but uh, no surprise there, Haru, Haru getting that goal. Uh, Yarmouth Vikings girls, I'm looking at a team that uh, is almost spot on to the midget double A team here in Yarmouth because a lot of these girls do play on that team. So they've played together, they know each other, they got good team chemistry. So it's no surprise to see a goal this quick. Yarmouth getting control, chipped down into the zone. Going down the other way is Burgess. Burgess controls, has it, tries to go off the glass. Up to the half board, Haru able to, to uh, forecheck and keep it in. Teams are down. Re referee wants them to play the puck. Coming in hard is uh, Moore. Avonview comes away with it. Going back that way is Benedict. Benedict able to get it deep. Legier behind her own net. Settles the puck, goes up through the middle to Moore. Moore with the lead pass. Uh, sorry, check that. That was Donaldson to Moore. Moore has it again. Chips it in deep. Skating, it af skating after it is uh, Rippy. And the Avalanche able to clear the zone and make it all the way down the ice. Not quite an icing, though. This year behind her own net. Off the boards to the Breton. Breton gets it over to McDonald. Yarmouth comes away with it, coming back the other way. That's Legier. Legier skates through. That'll be offside as number 10, Sage Breton, curls around and curls into the zone for the offside. Yeah, look at another replay here of that goal. It doesn't make contact with the post. So sorry, it's not a bar down, but it is a nice goal. <laughs> Avalanche able to clear the zone. Momentarily into the Vikings end. Coming back the other way. Uh, here come the Avalanche with numbers, three on one. Pass over the shot, it's wide. Pass in front, can't quite connect in front. Great opportunity there for the Avalanche. Coming back is uh, McDonald. McDonald chips it and chases it. Singer defending for the Avalanche in the corner. Breton with it, Breton pass in front, goes off the skate just wide. Once again, Breton with it, coming back the other way, and the Avalanche able to get it just outside into the neutral zone. Going back that way is 
Kosser. Avalanche able to gain the zone, get it in deep. Good forechecking in there by Benedict. Benedict has it behind the net, taken out of the play. Gets it over to her winger, though. To Benedict again. Back to the point. The long shot goes off of a couple bodies harmlessly into the corner. Back to the point to Williams. Williams with the wrist shot. Kicked away by the defense. That was uh, Tate uh, Eamon, sorry, with it. Getting into the avalanche zone, and it's fired down. Avalanche have it. Here's the shot. That goes wide. Vikings have it. Go up the sideboard. They'll control it again. Should get it out this time. Chip forward. Not going to get there in time. Titan defense able to clear the zone, and it goes back into the Yarmouth end. Yarmouth with that quick goal here in the first period. Certainly the type of start that they're looking to get. Where the tournament is based on points, you can't just uh, say a win definitely does any one thing to them. Although the fact that Yarmouth did beat Paramba last night, 5-4, to four, certainly uh, puts them in good stead if they can at least win a couple of periods that they could be in a championship game. Both teams fight for the puck. Avalanche come away with it. Peru can't quite get by the defense. Certainly had some speed and had some open ice. Had she been able to actually move with it, she probably would have had a breakaway. Vikings cycling back. Back to Rose. Rose gets it over to Gowdy. That's just outside the blue line. Comes back in for the offside. So I'm looking around the arena here, and uh, I'm seeing quite a bit of maroon and uh, quite a bit of gray. And uh, no surprise, since the uh, high school is only less than a kilometer away, a lot of students uh, got him themselves excused for last class and came out to support the girls. Double whammy, not that we're there, but I believe there's a high school uh, basketball game going on, female basketball tournament Yeah, I believe it's well. the female Steve Brewer tournament uh, happening there right now, and I know there's quite a few teams there. Busy day in Viking sports here in Yarmouth. Definitely. Slid across, good opportunity there. Unfortunately, the uh, Avonview winger unable to get to that puck. Weak pass, D to D there. That could have been picked off, just made it back in. That's Moore with it. Avalanche player bounces off Moore. Moore goes off the boards and into the neutral zone. Rippy can't quite get a hold of it, but Miller does. Miller goes off the boards. Coming hard the other way. Lots of open ice is for Legier. Legier has it chipped away. Going hard the other way is Singer. Singer's got a chance. Loses control of the puck. And that'll let uh, Haru go the other way. Haru one on three. Goes wide, takes a snapshot off the defender's shin pad, harmlessly into the sideboard. Legier with it again. Legier cycles off the boards. Will it make it out? Not quite. Avalanche able to keep that, keep that puck in. Going deep into the end is Fitzgerald. Cyc turns around, takes a look, goes to the empty wing. Fired right back. Oh, Burgess misses it. Instead, Breton comes away. Vikings have numbers. Breton has some speed. Goes to the left wing. The shot tries to sneak it in the short side. Covered up by goaltender Mackenzie Layton for a faceoff to her right. 7.53 to go here in the first period. The score remains. Yarmouth Vikings 1. Avonview Avalanche. No score. I've noticed a lot during this period that the, the defensemen are carrying this a lot for the Vikings. They are uh, swinging it up through neutral ice. And once they pass that blue line, they're passing it off to a forward or sometimes even taking a shot in a couple of cases. But most time trying to set up a play there. Avonview comes away with the uh, puck after the faceoff. Ayer with it. Air, sorry, with it. Vikings once again with it. That's Breton. Breton can't get by the defender. Once again to the neutral zone. That's Johnston with it. Nice feet, footwork there by Rose in order to get the puck into her, into her stick. 
Burgess almost blows a tire, but able to maintain her balance and get the puck into the neutral zone. Breton comes the other way, got some room to her left. Goes to the left, well defended. Cycles, uh, Cerns backwards. Nice pass to the middle. McDonald with the shot, the rebound. And we've got a hooking penalty, and we'd have to call that a good penalty on number 44, Lucy Burgess, as she certainly saved a goal. And uh, this is not something that Avonview is going to want. Penalties is not something you need to get back in this game. They want to get back and at least try to get that half a point and tie this in this period with a tie and possibly try to push forward and get a couple more points. But as I said, without hauling that down, I think the score would be two to one right now, or two to nothing, I mean right now. Puck into the corner. Ticket sales going on in front of us. And it is indeed a hooking penalty. The Avalanche able to uh, clear the zone. Lots of time for the Vikings to get control. Puck up to Donaldson. Cross ice pass, doesn't quite get there. Good move by Haru. Haru tries to go through everybody. Doesn't quite make it through the last two. Avalanche able to get it, keep it into the neutral zone. Yarmouth having trouble uh, breaking in. Right now they're not trying to, to, to chip. They're actually trying to carry it in. Good back-to-back -back pass there. It's Gowdy with it. Gowdy gets chipped away though. Standing up uh, tall at the blue line are the Avalanche. In comes Haru. Haru loses the puck again. And the Avalanche able to clear it into the Viking zone. Half this power play gone. So far the uh, Vikings unable to really have any type of play in the Avonview uh, end. Legere, rink wide. Nice pass up to Gowdy. Gowdy tries to chip it forward. Well defended there by Rippy. Coming back hard the other way. Through one. McDon uh, and that's Haru again with a hard wrist shot that goes high and wide. Back to the point to Legere. Legere goes cross ice to Gowdy. Gowdy with a wrist shot goes off of body. There's an empty net sliding over nicely as Leighton to make a save. Both teams go after it. Avalanche will come away with it and gain the neutral zone and clear it all the way down the ice, effectively killing off that power play. Five on five right now. So an Avonview skater having some problems. Her skates have gotten attached. Uh, her laces got uh, hung up together and now she can't really move. And she's being pulled to the bench. The ref, of course, wants her safety to be coming first there, making sure she's out of the way of that play. Oh, I'm not sure how that happens. Was that like one of those pranks on the bench where, you know, where one of her teammates tied the laces together? I don't know. Somebody check under the bench. There might be a skater there. <laughs> but I think it was the one of the loops. A lot of skaters double knot their skates, so one of the loops might have hooked on the back of her, uh, on the back padding on her skate and uh, stuck there, and she couldn't get it free, and uh, she couldn't really skate with the lace like that. Those kind of pranks are usually baseball things. You know, you light the fire, you, you stick the gum. You know, when you've got a bunch of people that aren't in games so you can have a lot of fun when you're on the dugout. It doesn't happen a lot in hockey. No, because people are too concerned about uh, <laughs> getting the win or getting a goal. <laughs> Both teams fighting for it at the half board in the Aramith end. Avonview comes away with it, pass in front. Here's an opportunity to the backhand. Saved by Miner, the rebound. I don't know where it is, behind the net, the wraparound attempt. Great opportunity here for the Avalanche. They still have control of the puck. The shot, that one goes harmlessly wide. And I believe that was all Benedict doing a lot of that work for the Avalanche. Once again, with all these ponytails, sometimes it's hard to make out a number. Keeping it in, though, good work by the Avonview Avalanche. The Vikings able to clear it into the neutral ice. Cross ice to McDade. McDade with the nice lead pass. Avonview gets the zone. We are going to have a power play for Avonview. Slashing call. I don't know who they're going to call that one against because there was a slash before the play, and then after the fact, there was another slash. So. And the winner, Olivia Ayer. <laughs> so it's just going to be a Viking penalty. 
Great opportunity for the Avalanche to get back into this game here at the end of the first period. 3.30 to go in the period with a person advantage. Breton coming forward. Lagging the puck deep. Pinched out of the zone, out of the, off of the play. No real checking uh, in female hockey, but you are allowed to use your body. Shh, don't tell the girls, like, the girls that they're not allowed to hit. <laughs> That's Benedict with it. She goes in that, gets back, uh, but unfortunately O'Leary not able to control the puck. Coming back the other way is Legere. It's one on two, all by herself. She'll go wide to the right. She'll stop, she'll leg, she'll dump it in deep, killing off some of the power play. That was Rose trying to keep it in, unable to. The puck goes deep into the Armouth end, and that's going to be an icing as Avonview unable to control the puck in their own end, and the faceoff will come all the way back down in their end with 2.40 to go in the, in the uh, period and 1.10 to go in the power play. Through all this, Avonview has put a great effort behind their attempts to clear. Uh, they're pushing forward at their own blue line. They're basically in a way, creating a wall of avalanche players to stop the uh, Vikings from advancing. Breaking out right now, the avalanche to go through center. That one hops over a couple sticks. There'll be no icing. Going deep forward is Legier. Avonview able to come away with it. I believe that that's Williams with it. Pass in front. Can't quite get to uh, reach her player, though. <laughs> Haven't you able to get it? It is onside. Coming back that way is Verge. Check that. That's Pittman. Pittman goes in front. Nobody there. McDonald with it. While falling down, able to clear the zone. Coming back the other way is Johnston. Check that. That was Burgess. Burgess. Coming back this way, and this time it's Rippy. Rippy goes left, goes right, tries to go left again, loses control. Goes back to the point, 12 seconds to go in this power play for Avonview. <coughs> Fitzgerald behind her own net. Coming back this way is the defense for Avonview. Stick lifted, chip forward, now it's uh, two on one. Going hard the other way is Haru, Haru. Nice poke check by Burgess. Coming back is Johnston. Johnson able to chip it forward to the neutral zone. Uh, Air able to get it back in, though. Both teams changing. One minute to go here in this first period. Peru makes a nice strip of the puck, takes a shot well wide. Going the other way is Jacquard. Jacquard gets it over to Moore. Moore with the wrist shot. It goes off of a stick harmlessly wide. <coughs> Hart clears it up. To the Avonview winger. They'll try to dump it in deep. Can't get it by the D. Yarmouth will break back the other way. Moore tries to chip it forward. Can't quite get there. 33 seconds. That one's chipped forward. Tries to get it towards Moore. Can't be there. And Mackenzie Layton takes caution, or uh, uh, makes sure she's cautious and covers the puck up. Especially with the dangerous Vikings all around the net there. Uh, Vikings are pouncing on any puck they see. Vikings have adjusted to a weird uh, defensive strategy. Uh, they have two forwards playing and three defenders. Just the way they're formatting their uh, faceoff circles. Puck behind the net. 12 seconds to go here in the first period. There will be an ice clean between periods one and two this time, every second period, but not before one last attempt for Benedict. Benedict with a wrist shot. Nice blocker save by Miner just as the period ends. So Miner has to come up big here at the end of the first period. The Vikings go away from the first period with a one nothing lead. There will be an ice clean. Any final thoughts before we break away, Cameron? Good goal there by Haru, assisted by Gowdy. We'll uh, return at the start of the second period. Once again, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us through MC Media for the 8th Annual Cook's Cup High School Hockey Tournament brought to you live from the Yarmouth Mariner Center in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia.
All right, we'd like to welcome everyone back. Teams at flip sides. Yarmouth going left to right. Avon View and White going right to left. That Singer with it tries to dump it into the center. We we're just kind of gathering up some stats so we could attempt to talk intelligently about what's going on in the female side of the tournament. Please don't hold us to it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll try to look intelligent, but... Uh... <laughs> as long as the cameras are pointing at the ice, we look very intelligent. Yep. <laughs> Coming the other way is Haru. Haru skates by two players, goes to her back end, taken out of the play. Puck goes back into the corner. That's Moore going towards it. Breaking back the other way now is Verge. Dumps it in easily played by Minard. Quick play, a little too quick by the defenseman there for, uh, for Yarmouth, and that's number nine, Air. Probably should have hung on to it and uh, made a, a better choice of where to pass it. Puck's in the corner. Yarmouth player down. Both teams pushing. Big, it's a four car pile up in the corner. And here's where things get rough. <laughs> There was an initial call made, and I believe that initial call was against Avon View. We'll have to wait to see what the uh, total amount of calls are now. But there I is have a, a feeling, Viking I down. I have a feeling it's not going to be just one penalty. Probably not. But there is a Viking down, and even Minard's over there taking a look. And that's number four, uh, Brianna Jacquard. She's back up, and uh, she looks like she's favoring her leg, but now she's getting back up to speed. And as we said, we see two players going in and number nine for Yarmouth, Olivia Ayer, and uh, we'll wait for a number for Avonview, but I believe that uh, initially Avonview was the call and we do have a Yarmouth player going off right now, Shayna Haru. Curious what for. We're gonna have to wait uh, to see what this is. We're gonna wait for some announcements, whether that was part of the uh, four car pileup or uh, whether it's something else. She's not gone anywhere. She's just standing at the door. She could be waiting for a key. Anyways, Yarmouth comes back the other way. Offsetting cross checking penalties. So the Haru thing has nothing to do with that. It must be an equipment issue that she has to have taken a look at. Muse with it, with the shot, it goes wide. Still a uh, extended uh, penalty uh, call. And finally, the, the play will be called. And it's number six, Hannah Benedict going in. Two minutes for roughing. Just going back to that Haru thing. Haru's gear is still sitting by the door, her gloves and her stick. So I doubt she's gonna leave those out in the open unless she's coming back. Whatever yeah. it is, she's right back on the ice. She's back on the next whistle. Let's see what it was about. Nothing apparently. <laughs> Maybe there was uh, something wrong with her stick or uh, something wrong with her skate. Face off to the right of goaltender Mackenzie Layton. Yarmouth with a power play here early in the second period. Nice play by Avonview going that way as Hart. Hart gets it between the defense, the shot. Minard with the save. That's Breton with it. Breton goes cross ice, trying to find McDonald. Couldn't quite get there, or Haru, excuse me. McDonald, McDonald to Haru. Haru tries to make a, an outside move, can't quite get there. Avonview yelling for an uh, uh, interference penalty on Haru to no avail. Puck in the corner. Yarmouth controls it. Back to the point. Here's the shot from Rose. Off a player, off the goaltender, and behind the net. That one almost made it all the way there. Haru with the puck again. Uses her feet. Gets it to back to the point. Rose with the slap shot. Deflected, another four car pile up in front of the net. Bodies flying, there's mayhem. Like I said, never tell the girls they can't hit. 
Puck fired back in, 33 seconds to go in this power play for Yarmouth. Yarmouth with some control in the end, but not really, uh, not really pushing through a lot of shots. Skating hard the other way is Parker, looking to uh, forecheck for Avonview. That'll give Yarmouth some numbers the other way, and indeed they have it. Three on one. That's McDonald with it, I believe. Going wide to the left. That was Eamon, I believe. Held in at the point, but chipped into the neutral zone. Coming back that is Rippy. Rippy with a long wrist shot, easily gloved by Minard. Face off will be to her left. Penalties are over. The uh, penalty for uh, Avonview, as well as the offsetting penalties, the uh, our first four car pile up, as I called it in the corner. They both get to get out of the box right now as it's a bit of an extended play here without a whistle. Everybody out of the box, five on five hockey, 11-18 to go in the second period. Avonview able to keep it in. Good work there by Verge. Thought we'd have a tripping penalty there. We don't. Verge comes with it again. The backhand can't come away. Chip forward. That's Moore skating hard for it. Everyone's skating. Moore gets to it first. Looks in front. Tries to pass it. Good defensive work there by Sophie Rose. Avonview comes back with it. Going the other way. Held in. Held in by the Vikings momentarily. Fired down the ice. And that will be icing. Number 21, Maddie Singer. Decides I need a break more than I need to make the pass. Fires it down the ice for the icing. Face off will be deep in her zone. Just we had mentioned Minard earlier. Lindsay is uh, 16. She's played hockey for five years, and I believe all of that spent as a goalie. Her older brother actually played for uh, Yarmouth Vikings uh, last year and was their starter. He's, she's an uh, Ottawa Senators fan, and what a goalie to pick as her favorite player is Marty Bordor. <laughs> Definitely a Marty Bordor. Female version. <laughs> a lot of Brodeur fans out there. He certainly, uh, through his many, many years in the NHL, and uh, able to uh, influence the position. Vikings come away with it. That's Haru trying to get somebody on her hip. Goes to her uh, wide to her right and is poked away. Avonview comes away with it. Avonview doing well trying to uh, actually defend Haru. They tend to close on her with multiple people. Coming back the other way is Williams. Williams has it, backhands it into the Aramith zone. That's Rose with it. Rose goes behind her own net. Tries to get it up to Moore. Moore trying to chip it forward. Puck underneath the player. And we do indeed have a slashing penalty on the Vikings. And it's number 66, Haley Moore. That's unfortunate that uh, Moore's getting the penalty. Her older brother plays for the uh, male Vikings as well. He's the assistant captain there, but Moore here, seeing her go to the box, she's a great playmaker, so Vikings will take a fall on that one. Some players are gonna have to uh, swing around. There we are, everyone's facing the right way now. Coming that way is uh, Paige Breton. Breton fires it in deep. Going back for it is Rippy. Sage, sorry, not Paige, Sage. I'll just stick with last names. Avalanche behind their own net, waiting. Yarmouth willing to let them kill their own power playoff if they want to. Gets off the boards to Jen Hood. Yarmouth gets it, fires it into the neutral zone. Avonview comes away with it, tries to get it deep, can't get it off Breton's leg. They will get the zone now. Nice move into the middle. Here's the wrist shot just wide, and that's number 13, Amy McDade. Back in the corner. That's Williams with it. Up to Breton. Breton can't get it out. Williams has it again. Fighting in the corner with uh, Landry. Williams comes away, the shot. Saved by Minard. Going hard to the net, sticks go up. Pushing happens, cross checks happen, slashes happen. There's lots of swinging going on. I can't see uh, this going, going out without anything being called. 
Well, I wonder what happened to start this one. <laughs> uh. Sometimes it might be easier if you just let them check. Yep. <laughs> Would have got a whole lot more anger out of that one. <laughs> but that was that's obviously going to be uh, kicking uh, going to be kicking uh, McDonald off the ice for that blatant cross check after the play. McDonald goes off rather unhappy. I don't know when she was skating across the middle ice, she was showing that Viking uh, logo on her jersey off to the fans. Thing is, in a tournament like this, uh, depending on what type of call gets played, you don't want to take yourself completely out of a tournament. Riley is a uh, right wing. She's 18, grade 12. Um, and what a player to be a fan of, again, looking at players relating to what's going on. Brad Marchand is her favorite player. What an instigator he is, and she and seems to be following suit. And there <laughs> she goes, off the ice. <laughs> Uh, and her team, favorite team, of course, if you're a fan of Marshane, you got to be a fan of the Bruins. Well, I can't uh, fault her for that. Definitely uh, interesting to see what's going to come down for penalties. There's one on each team in the box right now. I can see where McDonald's uh, gone off as well. But uh, the Avonview player, after the fact, was grabbing a hold of one of the player's sticks and dragging her along the ice, not letting go. So there could be a call there as well as the shoves and slashes back and forth could be creating more of these penalties. And I doubt you're going to get a call for everything. Uh, there likely has to be at least an extra body in for Yarmouth. Like, let's assume, because it didn't look like anyone was any more, any more an instigator than anybody else, so I expect the penalties will be offsetting. But uh, for whatever McDonald did that uh, gets her to exit the game, Yarmouth's likely going to have to put somebody in the box to cover for her penalty. Unless, of course, the McDonald penalty and the Avonview penalty make the offsetting penalties. We'll have to wait for the official announcement. See if we can clear all this up. Certainly a lot going on here with eight minutes and 35 seconds to go here in the second period. Third Viking in the box now. It's still only one Avonview. Avalanche. <laughs> Vikings are uh, giving each other a nice high five after that play in the box. Well, it's nice to give yourself a high five, but there's three of you in the penalty box right now. And if the, if the uh, Avalanche are able to actually score on some of uh, these uh, advantage plays, then now we'll have to wait and see. The referee's going over. We see a five-minute penalty. The old Mighty Ducks movie, uh, I believe it was the Bash brothers, the two boys were called, that were very aggressive. Well, we have the Bash sisters here in our penalty box. <laughs> All right. So I believe we've got offsetting penalties. Uh, and uh, Chloe Donaldson is being shown with the five minute penalty, but I'm sure that she is the one serving the penalty for McDonald's. We'll wait for the official announcement. Cameron, I'll let you grab that if the play is going on uh, so that you can jump in and, uh, and fill our folks in at home with exactly what's going on. Face off will be into the neutral zone. Right now, a two person advantage for Avonview. You cannot ask for a better opportunity. 58 seconds, they'll have a uh, two-person advantage for 58 seconds, followed by a full four minutes, regardless of the amount of goals they score, with an advantage, with a one-person advantage. Going back the other way is Singer. Singer has lots of ice, slap shot. Off the arm of player, she just fires it deep into the end. Avonview probably not used to this five on three because they have a lot of ice, a lot of room. No need to just push the puck forward or chip the puck in. They have lots and lots of room, and uh, they need to actually do use that ice. That pass should have been collected by Benedict. It goes off the to uh, go off of her stick. Coming back again is Rippy. Rippy gains the zone, gets closer, tries to pass it over, tries to pass it over again. It goes by everybody. Skating hard that way is Legier. Legier can't quite get it out though. To the point, long slap shot. Ooh, a lot on that one. Back to the point. Another shot directed to the net. Off the stick, into the glove. And with a two person advantage, you definitely want Miner to be covering up and taking, taking the uh, face off. That's air two for cross checking. Yarmouth number 18, Riley McDonald. Five minutes for cross checking at a game misconduct. That's McDonald, five for cross-checking and a game misconduct. Avenue penalty, number eight, Savannah Hart, 
Face off goes back to the point. Having you able to keep it in, we're just grabbing some numbers for you. On the next break, we'll let uh, Cameron kind of fill you in. There's something, Cameron, if you want to go for it now. I'm still trying to figure out who's got who. All right, well, <laughs> I can tell you there's offsetting cross-check penalties, and as expected, McDonald with the five-minute cross-check penalty, a major, and that's being served by Donaldson. So uh, now we're down to a one-person advantage is that initial penalty uh, being served by the Vikings. So it's five-on-four hockey now for another three minutes and 38 seconds. A terrific opportunity for the Avalanche to get back into this game to tie this up and more. Face off to the left of goaltender uh, Layton. Avonview comes away with it. Can't quite get the zone. They're going to fire it all the way down the ice, and it's going to be another icing. So now I think we've got everything here. Uh, Yarmouth, number nine. Uh, Ayer is going to get this cross-checking penalty. Uh, number 18, McDonald is going five in a game for a cross-check. And for Avonview, I believe they said number 12, Matty Phillips is in for cross-checking. So the offsetting and then the five is up on the board. Of course, the penalty that was also up there was from Moore getting a penalty a little bit earlier on. Avonview controls it briefly into the neutral zone. Having trouble collecting it on that five on three, they're able to actually can gain control but not get a lot of shots actually towards Minard. Maybe towards her, but not all the way through to her. Good uh, penalty killing rate now by the Vikings. As they're able to chip that puck back into the neutral zone. Down to three minutes to go in this power play. Once again, with a five minute major power play, if Avonview were to score, the power play does continue for the full five minutes. Nobody in there with a uh, big four check for Avonview. Yarmouth able to very easily get it and get the puck all the way down the ice. Chipped up the boards, nobody there for Avonview to get it. A little slow getting back. They got some room now, can't quite get to the puck is number three, Paige Parker. There's the P, there's the page I saw before. Another icing penalty as Page tries to get uh, a forward pass but unable to connect. Instead, ices the puck with 2.24 to go in this power play, 5.58 to go in the second period. Bit of sloppy play right now. Both teams trying to find some, uh, some momentum. Both teams are, and uh, there's no doubt still some aggression between the two teams, as you can see. Um, hopefully what the refs did with the penalties will settle it down a bit, but uh, we'll have to see. Avonview uh, about to send one too many players off. Shot off the mask. That one went off of a defender's stick, deflected high up into Layton's mask. That's she using your head. shakes it off. <laughs> using your head in that play. But up uh <laughs> Easy wrist shot handled by Minard. Face off will be to her right or left. So once again, the winner of this game will determine who plays in the female final. And the female final happening a little later on today. Uh, the scheduled time for that game is 7 o'clock tonight. And that, of course, will be brought to you live from MC Media. Right now, just looking at the points-wise, it's going to be tough for uh, both teams to try to get above each other. Avonview and Yarmouth still fighting for those last two spots. Back to the point. That one knocked away nicely. Lead pass. Beautiful pass to Haru. Haru has a breakaway. Comes alone. Deeks. The shot. Big save by Layden who gets the pad out. That one goes back. That's Air with it. Air gets by the red line. Gets it in deep. Nobody in for checking for Yarmouth though. Is there still killing a penalty? That was a shorthanded breakaway. Coming back the other way now is Verge. Pass just too far in front of her winger. Slap shot, handled, and more importantly, the rebound handled by Miner. Here's that breakaway. As we see, one, two, three, just shot down by that left pad. Haru didn't have anything else she could do there. I believe she tried to send it a bit higher up, but uh, lost, on, lost the edge on her stick. You often wonder as a goaltender when you see people that that have a, a great shot, and Haru certainly has a terrific shot. Uh, 
the shot. She can go upstairs easily. She uh, did on the first goal. <laughs> uh, when they start to deke. And you have to wonder if being chased down, and so the puck was in front of her a little bit, and therefore didn't have that great release point. If she had brought the puck back to release, might have had her stick lift, lifted and decided to go with the deke attempt instead. Avonview still with 40 seconds to go in this power play. One last attempt coming down this way is Pittman. Pittman with a shrist shot. It goes wide. Yarmouth able to get it and get it just up to center ice. Rippy with it. Rippy has it picked off. Coming back the other way, though, is Williams. That one goes all the way down. Breton with it in the corner, tries to find uh, Rose in front, and able to do, to, and able to do so. Avonview comes away with it. Off the boards, plenty of room to skate. Coming hard the other way is still coming up is Parker. Paige Parker goes to the middle, takes a wrist shot, off of a skate, harmlessly into the corner. Avonview still chasing after it. Going back the other way is Eamon. Eamon goes back behind the net to Legier. Off in the corner. Yarmouth looking to chip it forward, gains the neutral zone. Tricky play there by Parker, who does able to come away with it, has it, goes to her right, winds up, takes the wrist shot, easily handled by Minard, not much on that one. Legier circles behind her own net, still has the puck. Off the board, gets it up to Eamon. Eamon tries to go center ice, can't quite connect. Avonview comes away with it. A little bit of sustained pressure here by Avonview. Nice move into the middle. Here's a wrist shot off of, the, off of uh, Rose's leg. Avonview once again controls in the corner, cycling. Look to the point, cycles around behind the net. Cycles again. Little two-on-two -two hockey. Breaking up from the corner, pass in front. Nobody there. Good defense there by Yarmouth. Two-on-one break the other way. Up comes Breton. Breton looks to the middle, tries to get it across, goes to the side of the net. Can't quite connect with Eamon. Yarmouth with the play, some sustained play right now. And it's gonna come out the other way, and I think that's Benedict with it. Benedict goes to her right, back pass, gets it over to Hart. Hart with a backhand, blocker saved by Miner. Nice high shot, Miner doesn't go down right away, able to easily get that blocker in there. Avonview still with the puck. I think some changing needs to happen right now. And we have a hooking penalty. And going straight to the box is number six, Hannah Benedict. Uh, just to look into arena two uh, of the tournament. It's a guy's game. It's Prince Andrew taking on Eastern Shore. And after the first period, Prince, Prince Andrew is winning two nothing. I believe Prince Andrew might be the reigning champion, or is it Sir John A? I'm not 100% sure because there is a couple of different teams this year than last year. But I know the defending champion are here. Here comes a shorthanded attempt by Avonview. That's number 15. Macy Johnston just uh, goes wide, going for the short side. Yarmouth with this power play here at the end of the uh, second period, trying to pick up full points here in the period. Here the other way, we've got... Haru, Haru kicks it forward. She'll skate behind the net, get to the puck first. Fights through the four check, gets it back to the point. Legier cannot keep it in. Sorry, that was Fitzgerald. Looking to find Haru again, too far in front of her. Haru in the middle, can't quite get there. Gowdy with it. Gowdy tries to get it in front to Moore. Moore fights for it. Moore gets her stick, gets swipes at the puck, goes wide. Miller has the puck momentarily for Avonview, goes back behind the net, tried to pass in front. Avonview is going to clear the zone right now, all the way down the ice with 26 seconds to go in the period. Just a reminder, both teams have not scored in this period, so right now it's half a point each towards their totals. That's Burgess with it. Burgess gets ahead. Shot attempt not there. 
I've got a number nine for Avonview, actually, uh, and we're going to say it's Verge because I have two number eights on the Avonview chart, on my chart, so. And that ends the second period. That's a half a point for each, per, uh, for each team, like Cameron said. At the end of two complete, the Yarmouth Vikings won the Avonview Avalanche, no score. We'll take a quick break as the teams settle right now, and we'll be back at the start of the third period. And we're back going here in the third period. Yarmouth still with 19 seconds left on this power play. With this uh, points that are uh, allowed for periods and points for games and half points if it's a tie. You need a abacus uh, up here in the booth in order to figure out what's going on, Cameron. Yeah, I'm going to need an assistant. Uh, we'll, we'll need, we need one of the uh, volunteers to come help us. <laughs> yeah. One of those money ball people from uh, baseball, right? Somebody that's good with stats. Yeah, there. I don't know, know if Jonah Hill will be the best guy for it, but. <laughs> I wouldn't trust no Jonah Hill with numbers, personally. No, I, I don't think I would. But we won't get into that discussion. <laughs> Power play is over. Teams are at full strength. Once again, Yarmouth maintaining a 1-0 lead. Uh, all three teams uh, relatively even uh, in the female section of the draw. Earlier games saw, I say by Minard, earlier games saw Yarmouth defeat Peb 5-4 and Peb to beat defeat Avon View 5-3. So I think we expected this game to be relatively close based on the first two games, and as a 1-0 game, Cameron, it has been close. So it looks like every game Paramba is involved in, it gets high scoring. <laughs> Back to the point, long shot. There's an opportunity. Trying to get that through is Benedict. Can't quite get it to on net though. Coming back the other way is Breton. Breton, if she can get away, has a potential breakaway. Does pull ahead. Breton has a breakaway. Here's the shot. She's being hooked. Will it be a penalty shot? Let's see. Nope, just a hooking. Uh, she, was, she was not in the motion of taking a shot. She was not attempting to take a shot. I say yes. Give <laughs> us the, give us the, power, the uh, penalty shot. But uh, as you can see, she's not in the middle of taking her shot when she is hooked. And then it's after the fact. She actually takes her shot after the fact. Plenty fine. Uh, that's not interrupted by the hook. So it's just a hooking penalty. And that's number 20, Sophie, uh, sorry, uh, Sydney uh, Kosser in the box now. And Yarmouth looking to get that insurance goal. But not before we get another, another penalty. I uh, looks to be slashing. That's going to be against number three. And her shirt is tucked well in, so I have uh, number three. Yep, good job. That's Paige Parker. So a two-person advantage for Yarmouth here early in the third period. You cannot ask for a better opportunity to get that uh, second goal and potentially third goal. It's getting a bit chippy here now. Uh, I think the refs are trying to handle it with these penalties. Yarmouth able to keep that in. Going hard the other way is Breton. Breton pinched off, nobody in helping out. Yarmouth with uh, two people advantage, a two person advantage. They have every opportunity to win every battle. Lots of room, can't quite get that shot through. Haru stops it momentarily. Haven't been able to get out. They've got Haru on the point for this with her shot. Going hard the other way is Gowdy. Gowdy gets to the zone. 
to Breton. Breton looking for Haru, looking a little too much. Held in by Legere. Legere goes cross ice. There's a quick shot. It goes right to Leighton, who covers it up right away. So although it's a two-person advantage, Cameron, the fact that the penalties were so close together means that it's going to be almost a full two minutes at two, but that the power play is not going to extend past the two-minute point. Yeah, they're going to get their they're going to get their fair flat too, out, and that's it basically. No, uh, no two and a half minute, no three minute power play here. So, <laughs> puck underneath the player goes back to the point, and that's air with it. Air with a wrist shot, gloved out of the air by Layton. Layton's probably going to be called upon to make some big saves here in the next minute and five seconds as Yarmouth is on this power play. Minard hasn't had to face much in this little stretch because, of course, of the power play, there really hasn't been much reason she should be taking any shots. Face off to the right of Layton. Avonview clears it. Minard will go out and uh, tap it forward to her defense. That's Muse with it. Muse goes off the boards. High into the neutral zone to Haru. Haru has lots of room, takes a long shot. Lots on it, but wide. Gowdy with it, clears it towards the middle. Haru again. Cycles it back to Gowdy. Gowdy to the point. That's Muse. All the way through, Git goes wide. Breaking in for it uh, is Legere. Lots of room, nothing on that though. She'll have to fight to get it back. Can't quite control it, two on two. Easily out of the zone will be Avonview, and just when they think they shouldn't have a chance, up comes Rippy, going through players. Gets pulled down. Avonview faithful calling for a hold. It's not to come. Moore goes the other way, fired back in. That pass just a little in front. Peru stays on side, has the puck. Makes a nice move. Pass to the point. There's the shot. Once again, Leighton able to cover that up. They're able to withstand the pressure, withstand the two-person advantage, keep the game at one, Cameron. Are you surprised? Uh, Avonview definitely needs to uh, get a goal here and uh, take the lead for this period and try to win this game because where the standings sit, it's sitting very close if they could get that. With the, uh, with the fact that they lost that last game and uh, Yarmouth won their last one, it kind of shuffles it up. It all depends on how many points you have. And uh, if they can flip it around, it will definitely come down to uh, who won the period. That one gets by, uh, that one gets by Rose. In though is Fitzgerald to go get it. Up to the uh, neutral zone, or up to the half board, sorry. Breton can't quite come away with it. Minard gets it, covers it up. I think just so she can touch the puck. I want it. <laughs> She'll have that face off to the left of her though. So she might face a couple more shots here with 11-18 left in the third. And Avonview actually, especially in the second period, did control some of the play. And I think they just have to find their feet again after uh, taking a few penalties. Couple of those penalties were not something the coach would approve of, that slash of the ankle and stuff like that. Discipline pen penalties, basically. Sometimes they happen, that very first penalty that uh, Burgess took, well worth it, it saved a goal. Other things, when you start having slashing after the play, uh, uh, you have to be a little more disciplined than that. And I'm talking both teams, because both teams have been in the box. Godet tries to clear it in front. Can't quite get there, sorry, that was O'Leary. Goes back into the corner, there's O'Leary again. O'Leary tries to find Hood. Hood uses her body to uh, get control of the puck. Coming in, helping out nicely, though, is Breton. Breton goes off the boards. It's going to get past her teammate up to 18 Pittman. And we'll have yet another penalty. This one's for slashing. And oh. I believe it's number 20, Sophie Rose. Once again, Avon View with a chance, with a uh, advantage, a person advantage. If you look in behind the uh, face-off circle, you see a nice big Go Vikings. That was put up uh, during the second period as the action was going on. 
Uh, by the looks of the uh, art skills there, I say the guys might have made it. <laughs> At least it's spelled correctly. <laughs> Good four check in there by Yarmouth, disturbing the uh, breakout. But haven't been able to come away. They've got numbers three on two, but cannot control the pass. But then uh, Benedict does, goes wide, tries to pass it in front, can't quite connect with their uh, winger. Nice play at the point there by Rippy to gain some room. Rippy's going to come away with it again. Once again, goes to the corner, and that's Verge with it. Rippy can't keep it in. Skating hard the other way is Gowdy. Gowdy's going to get there first. Can't quite chip it forward. Rippy has it. Rippy goes cross ice to Benedict. Benedict winds up just a little late with that shot. Coming back the other way is Parker. Parker gains the zone, sir. Uh, that's Rippy, I think. Gains the zone, but can't do much more than that. Good opportunity for Yarmouth right now. That's Lauren Gowdy with it. Gowdy kind of running out of gas as she was uh, here for the first half, but does draw the penalty. Keeps those legs moving. Draws a, I guess, contact penalty. I believe that's what that is. But she is a bit slow to get up, which is not something you want. Haru even had a word with the, penal uh, the player going to the box before she could even go to the box. Uh, Haru stopped her and probably said, what was that for? And uh, it really wasn't a whole lot. Uh, we've seen a lot worse in this game. Gowdy pinched off on the board. She's uh, going to go out. Uh, she's under her own steam right now, getting there, holding on to a hip. Hopefully, she'll be all right. Just going by the fact that Haru is very defensive of her line mates. Uh, she doesn't like anybody going at them. We've seen a couple of events, not this year, but in last year's tournament. She was, uh, I've se we've seen her go after people, headhunt them almost after they've harmed one of her players. And been in the box as a result of it. Yep, she's uh, probably no stranger to the box. There's yeah, probably a yeah. special spot for her. Yeah, I think her, <laughs> think her name's in there somewhere, actually. But. There's a little nameplate above her spot. <laughs> and actually, a few of the Harus, including Daddy Corey, has been in the box a few times himself. So, you know, the apple didn't fall far. <laughs> An aggressive player, and as a result of the, that aggressiveness, she actually uh, able to score a lot of goals and get free a lot. So, I mean, it's just, it is, it's part of the game and it's uh, it's the way that she plays and she's certainly very effective that way. And she does have the lone goal in this game. Currently is the game winner. Four on four hockey for, well, not anymore as Yarmouth now with the power play coming out of the box and five on four for Yarmouth for an additional one minute and 10 seconds. Yarmouth looking for an insurance goal. Not really keeping the puck in though, not really pushing right now. Not, uh, not holding that blue line. Avonview able to have lots of room in the neutral zone and able to get the puck in. That's Muse with it. That one can't be controlled and it goes right back in. Fitzgerald behind her own net. Goes the other way. Kept in again. Avonview looking a little better here on the uh, PK than they did on the uh, last power play. Once again, Yarmouth breaks out. Hard off the boards. Nice lead pass to Haru. Can't quite control it. Rippy tries to get it out. It's going to go back in the corner to Haru. Haru pass in front. Just for players. Nobody at the blue line holding that line, though, as Air gets it in the neutral zone. Yarmouth not very aggressive at all here in the power, power play. Breton can't control that pass. Not sure. Uh, once again... This is Yarmouth's first game, so it shouldn't be a... Uh, they shouldn't be overly tired, but the fact that the girls are actually getting through their tournament pretty much in one day. There was a game last night between Paramba and Yarmouth, but past that, the rest of the three games for the uh, girls' side of the tournament, the female side of the tournament, are happening one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the evening. And the one in the evening is the championship, which could potentially see the game from last night repeated. Either way, uh, it looks like things Paramba has got themselves a spot. Uh, it's really coming down to these two teams uh, between uh, Yarmouth and Avonview are the two teams that are competing for it at this point. Uh, Paramba managed to get one and a half out of their first game and then four out of their second, which 
All right, so Paramba, I guess, Cameron, let's just talk about them right now. We, we'll, we'll, we'll go that far. Yeah. Paramba with five and a half points. I do not believe anybody, I don't believe both teams can catch Paramba. So I think it's safe to say that Paramba has definitely filled one of the slots in the final right now, wouldn't you say? Uh, it's actually Yarmouth can catch them, but Avonview can't. So that guarantees that Paramba is there. That's what I mean. But uh, Yarmouth High could still fall behind Avonview. So it's between these two teams for the last spot, and right now sitting slightly above Avonview is Yarmouth. Yarmouth with six skaters on. Whoops. They got that all cleaned up. Five on five. A little under seven minutes to go. Avonview looking to win a period and uh, potentially win a game. Benedict has it. Benedict tries to go to the middle, can't quite get there. Breton loses it in her skates. Spins around, doesn't control it, off of a skate. Minard will gather that up and cover it up with a face-off. Taking no chances. 6.40 left here in the third. one nothing Yarmouth. And this is coming down to it. Game a little slow here in the third period. I think both teams a little, uh, a little tired. Uh, we're not really seeing a lot of great opportunities, re uh, regardless of the fact that we've had some power play opportunities. Back to the point, there's the wind up, there's a shot off of a stick, always dangerous when that happens. Nice hard slap shot from the uh, point from, uh, I think it was Benedict. Goes back behind the net, that's Rose going after it. She gathers up the puck, got nobody on that wing. Yarma staying towards the middle. I call it a defensive shell, except that it's in their own end and it's five on five hockey. Coming back the other way is Gowdy. Gowdy slowly makes it in. Goes to her left, goes to the backhand. Slides it in front. Nope, stays behind the net. Coming back the other way, numbers with numbers. Three on one now. Nice defensive play there by Kenzie Muse. Can't get it out though. Good forechecking by Abview. Have it in putt, there's a shot. Big save by Minard. Minard hasn't had to do much, but here with 5.36 to go in the second, third period, and with the game on the line, comes up big, Cameron. And definitely, uh, you mentioned earlier the defensive shell that uh, Vikings appear to be going into, and they cannot get into that shell. They tie this game. That means Avonview can come back and win this game, and uh, that's not something you want points-wise when it comes to trying to face off in the finals with Paramba. Yarmouth comes away with the puck. Peru skates by a few people. More going up with her. Peru bowls her way through that. Good job. It's going to get to, no, it doesn't get to more. Coming out the other way is Rippy. Nice move. Good lead pass. Or just tries to go to the left. Uh, check that. That's Pittman. Pass behind her uh, winger, though. Moore trying to fight her way through a four check. That one's offside, that one's touched, face off, comes outside with 5.03 to go. This game kind of, bit of a crawl here. Both teams trying to establish something. Both teams starting to look worn out. Uh, I especially notice um, the line that with Haru in it, with Moore, is looking that extra bit of tire because they've been playing a ton of ice time. Uh, just putting a push on, as well as Haru's been on uh, the PK and the power play, so. She's going to get, she's definitely tired. And there's a player going off for Avonview, holding her neck. Sorry, I couldn't catch that number for you. <clears throat> that face off goes all the way back into the uh, avalanche zone. Burgess brings it off the boards, gets it to her winger. That's O'Leary, can't get it out though. Took a little too long. Nice play by Moore to keep it in. She has a chance. There's the shot. Stick save into the corner. Good work by Layton. Rung, rung around the boards. Avonview looking to break out. Get it into the neutral zone. Easily stopped by Legere. Back to Moore. Moore tries to chip it forward. I think that went off the linesman and bounced forward. Coming back the other way is Avonview. Nice lead pass. Gets into the skates of Eamon. She can't find it. That's Haru, Haru has room. Goes a little too wide to her left. She'll have to stop, back check. Tries to get a point, can't quite get That'll be a delayed offside. That will not be a delayed icing. 
406 to go in the third period. But once again, I'd like to thank everyone for streaming us through MC Media. This, the eighth annual Cook's Cup High School Hockey Tournament, coming to you live from the Yarmouth Mariner Center in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. My name's David Doucette, and with me for today's game, Cameron George. And this, the last round robin game of the female side of the tournament. Cameron, trying to determine which two teams are going to be in the final later tonight. And again, we've mentioned this multiple times, it's between these two teams for the last spot. The Yarmouth get, if the Yarmouth could get enough points, they could potentially pass Paramba and have first in the division and put Paramba in second, or Avonview could come back. Gowdy with a wrist shot. Nice stick save by Layden. That, uh, that was a nice shot by Gowdy. That one would have seen the far side. Kept in by air momentarily. Avonview able to get it out. Three and a half minutes to go in the game. Chasing back for the puck is Rose. Rose has it. Takes a look. Goes the safe route, can't quite get there. Nice hard shot by number six, Hannah Benedict. Like Haru, I think Benedict is the one that has the uh, wicked shot for uh, Avonview. Avonview player taken out in front of the net. That'll be a delayed penalty. Avonview has the puck. That was Ripley who was knocked down, the captain of the team. And I believe it's number eight, Lexi Landry, going to the box. Nope. nope. I want to say that might be Gowdy going to the box. Strong player, if so, going off for Yarmouth. And one of the defensemen that's uh, been on the ice a lot. So with three minutes to go, a great opportunity for Avonview to get back into this game and tie it up. Now they have to see if they can find that extra gear here in the last part of the game, because they're obviously tired as well. It is indeed a cross-checking penalty against Lauren Gowdy. Pass in front. Broken up nicely by the Vikings, able to clear the zone. Going back forward is Burgess. Burgess has it, goes behind her own end. Not a lot of uh, speed right now for Avonview. Breaking in nicely there is number 11, Kenzie Muse, to keep the puck in. Saw the opportunity to actually fire the puck deep and kill a few precious seconds off of the uh, penalty. Avonview with the wrist shot, gloved out of the air by Minard. Coming up as play continues here for the 102, one. sorry, 109 to go in the power play, 217 in the game. Yarmouth uh, maintaining that slim one goal lead and that goal early in the game. Avonview has the puck again. Cycling with it, both teams going for it. The linesman or the referee is going to want that players to move that puck. Yarmouth willing to just kill that PK, kill that penalty off. That's Haru with it. Haru gets it just to the point though. Kept in, nice hard slap shot, just wide. That one's going to be out though. Back the other way is Miller. Miller chips it in. Lots of time for Yarmouth to get it into the Avonview zone. That's Singer with it. Singer with the lead pass. Just a little too far for Verge. Verge has it. Goes wide to her right. Has some room. Stops. Turns. Looks to the point. Gets it back to Miller. Miller cannot hang on to it. 19 seconds to go in the power play. Uh, it really looks like Avonview might be just a little bit out of gas. That one gets out. Almost too many players on the ice. Coming back the other way, we've got uh, Rippy going one way, going the other way, has some room all by herself though. Gets it back to the point to Miller. Miller has lots of room. Miller passing it to, uh, gets it over to Verge. And Yarmouth fires it down the ice and that will be icing. 56.8 seconds to go. Face off will be in the Yarmouth zone. Changes to be made and I think we have a timeout called. Yarmouth with only with less than a minute to go, Cameron, I think looking to rest their better players so that they can finish this off strong with the players they want on the ice. So just looking at the stats now, if the Yarmouth can keep it like this, they will take the uh, they will take the last spot. But if Avonview can beat them, that puts it. Uh, I haven't worked out the full calculations yet, but that puts it in neck and neck with each other. Uh, maybe a half a point either way. 
and, and we're going by memory and what we know. We're not looking at the official score. Yeah, that's, that's true as well. So we don't, <laughs> we don't want to go it onto a limb and actually say something that isn't true. So let's just say that Yarmouth should be looking to win this period and win this game. Uh, if they can, they'll come out first uh, in the round robin portion, and it'll be one versus two, Yarmouth versus Peb in the final. Part on Bob. Face off to the left of Minard, controlled by Avonview. There's a good attempt. There's a shot that goes off of a player, off the defense, into the screen. That might have been dangerous had it not gone off the defenseman. The pr uh, pressure being on Yarmouth here. They're going to keep Minard in, of course, but the uh, Avonview net is empty. I was wondering where you're going with that. <laughs> Did you really think they were going to pull Minard out? <laughs> no, I was thinking of, of the fact they might put White in and give Minard a rest, but then the fact of that it's 6 5 for Avonview, of course you'd keep Minard in your net. Leighton, as you said, Leighton out of the net for. Uh, Avonview, so it is six on five. Avonview doing what they can to try to tie this game. Once again, there is no uh, overtime or shootout during the round robin. A tie would be a tie. To the point, McDade with the wrist shot, saved by Minard. There's the rebound. McDade with it again, fires it towards the net. Yarmouth gets it. And six on five means nothing. It's uh, still icing because it's not a power play. And actually, Minard for the first girl shutout of the tournament. Twenty-seven point eight left in the third. This is getting interesting. Face off the Miners right. Both teams once again. Avonview controls it. Pass over to the point. The Singer. Singer winds up. Takes a wrist shot. Coming the other way is Haru. Haru pulled down, and we're going to have a power play or a penalty. So are we going to see five on five, or is Avonview just going to place their goalie back and take take the uh, take the loss? Uh, pretty much had to do that, Singer. Uh, Haru was going to go on a uh, one on nothing breakaway. And Haru would have been happy to. Since uh, the penalty occurred in the neutral zone, the faceoff will be outside the blue line of Avonview. It's five on four hockey right now for the last 17 seconds. And this should pretty much, Yarmouth doesn't need to do much but keep the puck in. Breton throws it deep into the uh, end. She'll get it again. Throws it in front, can't quite get there. Yarmouth just looking to kill off three more seconds. Avonview has it to the point. Peru with a long shot, gobbled up by Layden. It would have been too late anyways. A very early goal by Shayna Haru holds up for the entire game. And we see something that we don't see too often, a one nothing hockey game. Yarmouth Vikings won, Avonview Avalanche, no score. Cameron, what does this mean for the girls final? So it's looking to be Yarmouth versus Paramba. Yarmouth ending with seven and a half points. Again, this is not official. This is going by our memory and what we have for stats. But Paramba ends with five and a half. And sadly, Avonview, not being able to get many points out of this game, ends with two. So it should be a very nice game between Yarmouth and Paramba for the finals. Again, their last game was 5-4 Yarmouth. Will we see the same results? Or will we see something else? Two home teams, basically. One from yep. the town of Yarmouth, one from out in the county. But both share this rink as their home arena. That game scheduled for 7 o'clock. I think we're running a tad behind schedule. We'll see whether or not that still holds up as the time. But uh, we're about to announce the player of the game awards. Number one, Lindsay Minard with the player of the game for Yarmouth. That makes sense there, getting the uh, shutout. <laughs> and the player of the game for Avenue, number 44, Lucy Burgess. Lucy Burgess with the player of the game honors for Avenue. So once again, we have a final that is uh, scheduled to take place at 7 o'clock between the host Yarmouth Vikings and other local team, Paramba Sharks. Coming up next on Arena One is uh, not till 5.30. We actually have a bit of a break here. West Kings versus Paramba in Arena One. Uh, final thoughts on the game, Cameron? Uh, it was a great game. Both hard fought, hard fought from both teams. Of course, being a score like one nothing, that's a small seed you can have in hockey. Uh, that's a great game here and 
nice to see my my Vikings make it to the finals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us on our web stream through MC Media. On behalf of myself, David Doucette, my partner today, Cameron George, everybody behind the camera and in the studio, they're bringing you these shots. We'd like to thank you for joining us. Next scheduled game on Arena One is scheduled to start at 5.30 between West Kings and Paramba in the male division. Thanks for joining us. Hope to hope you'll see us again soon.